Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Cap and welcome back to the channel and another seven days to die video. Now this one's going to be a little bit different here and hopefully you'll stick around long enough for me to explain everything that I want to say. And that's I want to talk to you guys about the development process for the PC version of the game versus the console version. I've been playing the PC version since Alpha 1 came out the very first day that it came out. Been with it for a long time. Still absolutely love the game. I don't play it on console, but I know there's a lot of people that do and there's a lot of people that watch my tutorial videos on the console side of it. And I get a lot of questions of when is the console, the PC, and the Xbox going to have the same version on there. I thought I would see if I could try and clear up a little bit about the way it works and why the console version is so far behind, quote unquote, the PC version. Okay, for starters, I do not work for the Fun Pimps. I have no affiliation with them. I'm just a YouTuber like a lot of guys on here. I make videos about the game I really enjoy to teach you guys what I've learned. So, I have no affiliation with them. They aren't asking me to make this video. This is just me explaining to my subscribers and hopefully anybody else that finds the video what the process is so that you guys can be informed. Okay, for the PC side of things, the way it works out is... The fun pimps, who are the main developers for the game, the creators of the game, decide on stuff they want to add to the game. So they work on it and work on it and work on it. And then after they get to a point where they're happy with it, they send it on to their QA team, their quality assurement team, a quality assessment team, however you want to word it. And that's the team that goes through and checks it to make sure it works, make sure it's not crashing. They test it on multiple different kind of hardware, different situations to see if it's going to be stable enough. From there, it goes to the experimental build. And if you happen to be playing the game on PC, you can select the experimental or beta option for the game in Steam and actually have a chance to download the experimental version of the game. Knowing full well that it's unstable, it's probably going to cause bugs and crashes, and you're going to have to start lots of new worlds, but it's meant for us to be able to play it and provide feedback to the developer so they can fix additional bugs. And it goes back in a loop. We report things, they go back to the concrete creation, they try and fix as many bugs as they can, it goes to QA, they think it's all good, it goes back to experimental and it loops around like that until everybody's satisfied and then they push it to PC as a stable release and we get it immediately. So that's why they can release something, a bug fix, something minor like that, push it out and we get it in one day versus how it works on the console. Developing for the console is an entirely different animal for various different reasons. For starters, consoles have a lot more limitations than the PC version actually does because it just doesn't have the same kind of horsepower, has a different kind of hardware, that sort of thing. And because Sony and Microsoft have their own set of rules that developers have to follow before they can be allowed to release content, patches, updates, whatever, onto their individual systems. So, the way it actually works out is once we have a stable patch on PC, then the fun pimps get together with Telltale and Iron Galaxy, and they go through and they look at which pieces of the most recent stable patch on PC that they think they might want to try and put on console, because not everything can go on there. So they may go through and say, okay, this will work, that won't work, let's try and add this, let's do this, let's do that, that sort of stuff, and they kind of start putting together a package of what they want to do. So then they start working on it, and they start working on developing and getting the coding done, the assets done, the artwork, and they put it all together, and the fun pimps get it all mashed together, and then they send it on to Iron Galaxy, now the developing company. Iron Galaxy then go through and kind of put their special touch on it, and then they start working together to do bug testing on consoles. They go back and forth trying to fix it, trying to fix problems, get as many patches done as they can, until they have a stable version of a patch. Once they have a stable version, they send the patch onto a company called Testronix. Testronix will then put it under the microscope and try and break it as many different ways as they possibly can in order to try and ensure that they can't find any additional bugs or additional problems. If they find any problems at all, it goes back to the very start for the console development. It goes back to the fun pimps and Iron Galaxy. They start ironing out some more of the bugs. They do some more internal QA testing to make sure that it's fixed as much as they can, and then they send it back on to Testronics again and this can loop back and forth and back and forth for a while until Testronics says okay we think we have a stable patch we are good to go. At this point Testronics and the guys send the patch on to Sony and Microsoft for it to put through their certification. Now Sony and Microsoft both have their own different levels of certification that has to go through before they will give their stamp of approval and sometimes that approval rating can take anywhere from just a couple weeks to anywhere to a couple months just kind of depends on it. If you've ever been playing a really popular game like you know Halo, Call of Duty or something like that and you're wondering like why does it take so long to get this patch out? 
That is exactly why. It's because the developers have to go through a rigorous bug testing until they finally have something that's stable, and then even then they still have to try and get it past Microsoft and past Sony before they'll give their stamp of approval before they can send it out to you guys. And that's why you may get bug fixes or small little performance tweaks a whole lot faster because it's easier to fix bugs on consoles because it's the same hardware. So if they're having a frame rate issue, they know, okay, maybe there's something wrong with the way we're using some processing power. We can redirect this. We can make some small changes and send it on. And it's going to work the same over every single console because something they have to make sure that they have right is that it's not going to accidentally break the console because everybody that spent money on this and they're not going to want to have this universal patch that just absolutely cripples their system. So they're going to go through as much rigorous testing as they possibly can. So hopefully this at least gave you guys a really good idea and a good understanding as to what it takes to get a patch out for a console or even additional updates and additional content for you guys so again just so you know they are actually working on they're trying to get stuff to you guys but just like on the pc buying it on the console you have to acknowledge the fact that it is early access it is still in development so sometimes you may have big gaps in time between when you get stuff we even as pc players sometimes we go months before we get a major patch so just stick with them and know that they are actually working on it so hopefully if you found this video useful or if you have any questions do me a favor and leave it in the comment section down below and you know do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button if you did find it beneficial. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time. Hope you guys will subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on future videos. You guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later.